let's uh, let's take a look at someone else that got pwned as well, and a little higher profile in this one, as we mentioned. Uh, this one's from ArsTechnica.com. The number of companies caught up in recent hacks keeps growing, and uh, this one rates back to something that I think we covered on the show um, that was the the Twilio um, hack yes. a couple weeks ago. That So is this a situation where by hacking Twilio that they were able to use what they gained there to hack others, or is this, are they just using the same method that they oh, used? Oh, it's, it's really starting to look like that is the case, that you know we had the Okta breach yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okta, like the most secure company on the planet, that's not a military organization. Uh, for them to have a breach, that is a big, big deal. And a big part of how the attackers were able to get in that, to there was via the Twilio breach. Mm -hmm. Twilio, uh, they, they have a few different products in their portfolio. A lot of it is voice over IP, though. And so the attackers, once they gained access, were able to basically interfere with multi-factor authentication. If you're, you, You'll hear people say, like, don't use your cell phone, like text messages. Don't use text messages for MFA. Okay. You want to use an authenticator use app, app yeah. right? Not a text message. And the, the old attack vector was a SIM swap attack. Where if an attacker could get your phone service moved over to their SIM, they would get your text messages, and so now they'd have your MFA. But that's really hard to pull off and mm -hmm. really unlikely. So I never view that it's as like a real threat. impossible kind of spy stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But when they when an attacker breaks into Twilio and is able to basically gain access to the VoIP channels that are powering some of these phones. All that goes out the window. Like mm. SIM cards aren't even involved at that point, uh, and that's part of how they were able to leverage that to be able to target Okta, uh, Signal. Also, you know, the end-to-end -end encrypted messenger service was hit, uh, and now the big one, LastPass. LastPass, that's a, a huge deal, right? Yeah. LastPass is a security company. Uh, we we all, all three of us, use LastPass pretty heavily. Yep. Uh, I use it for work. I also have my, my personal LastPass, yeah. so I'm a heavy user in it. Uh, they they don't have any information on uh, vaults being accessed. So no password vaults were accessed, okay. but... Uh, user data was accessed inside of LastPass, uh, including hash passwords. So they have asked for people to basically reset their master password in, in some cases. That, now, I got a message from LastPass telling me about the breach, but it didn't say that my account was accessed, so it didn't ask me to reset my master password. Hmm. So I don't think everybody's uh, hash password was accessed. I think yeah. they're doing uh, individual notifications, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see another update here in the next week telling everybody like, hey, yeah. time to rotate yeah. your master password. They always love Maybe to do jump that. out. Because they can kind of get out in front of them. Oh, yeah, you know, we, we did have a breach, doing the responsible thing, but only a few and we'll reach out to you if, you, if you're a part of that. And then like, Three weeks later, like, oh, yeah, by the way, everybody was talking. <laughs> yeah. It was a complete compromise. It's always bigger than you think. Yeah. Yeah. The neat thing about LastPass's architecture is that you encrypt your password vault on your local right. machine, and you upload that. So they don't actually have the key to unlock your vault. Hmm. Okay. So if an attacker, yeah, if you lose that key, <clears throat> yeah, you're hosed. You're flipping hosed. Yeah. Yeah. So if an attacker got access to everything in LastPass's network, they still wouldn't be able to open up your vault. It would still be encrypted and secured. So it, it's a great design. I I'm still very comfortable using LastPass, even though they had this breach. Yeah. yeah. Um, since I've used them, I've used them for a long, long time. Uh, this is the second notification that I've gotten from them. The first one bad. was really interesting. It just said, hey, last night we picked up a spike in bandwidth on our network, and we can't attribute that to anything that, that mm -hmm. we did. And so we think something may have happened. And just to be on the safe side, we're notifying you, Smart. and you might want to rotate passwords. So they get ahead of things. They do, yeah. So they're, they're a very trustworthy company, and, uh, and so that, that's good. But now the rumors are starting to pour out that they, they had a, a developer account get compromised, and the, the attacker was able to gain access to LastPass source code. Okay. And so, you know, some private intellectual property was able to be extracted. And so that's bad for LastPass. doesn't really affect us users. Uh, but that the attacker was able to get around MFA potentially as a result of the Twilio breach. So this is another kind of, of uh, finger, tentacle, whatever, kind of yeah. reaching out of that Twilio breach and yeah. showing it. It's almost like dominoes as each of these providers start to get affected. So it's like, who, what was it a couple years ago? Was it Cloudflare or who had a... A breach like that that once they solar winds oh yeah yeah, yeah where it's like winds, yeah. by them being breached it affected all those just government yeah. organizations yeah. Tons seeing of another people. one of those yeah. if you enjoyed that segment be sure to check out our entire podcast available in the playlist right here and you can always subscribe to stay up to date with the latest tech news and other happenings in the it world 
Be sure to tune in every Thursday for new episodes. I hope to see you there.